Hi everyone, uh, this is Trevor here. So we will be discussing this problem constructing the array from code forces round 642. I've been getting this question that why don't you upload it as fast as possible? See, I do not compromise on quality. I take my time, I edit my videos. I do not keep the glitches in the video. That is why I take a bit of time. So what is the problem sheets? The problem sheets will be given an N and you got a print in array. So initially you have arrays filled with zeros. So you will have an array of size five filled with zeros. So what does the problem demands? The problem says if you had the first turn, what you need to find is the longest consecutive subarray that is completely filled with zeros. So we can say that this is the longest consecutive subarray that is filled with zeros. The subarray is a part of the array that is consecutive and in, and it is in the same order as of the array. So we can say this is the longest subarray, which is composed of zeros. So you find the middle of it. So the middle is this and whatever is the turn you replace it. So the, it was the first turn. So you replace it by one. So once you've replaced it, so the array will look something like this and you're at your second turn. So at your second turn, you'll find the longest consecutive subarray filled with zero. So this is one of them and this is one more. So what we can. So there are two sub arrays. Whenever there are two sub arrays of the same size, what you will do is you will take the sub array that occurs first. So this is the first from the left and you'll find the middle. So since there are even number of elements, L plus R minus one by two will be a middle. That means this one and you replace it by two. So the array now looks something like two comma zero one zero zero. Now, which is the longest consecutive sub array? This is this. So you replace it by three on the third turn. On the fourth turn, you replace it over here by four. On the fifth turn, you replace it by here. So you get the resultant array as two, four, one, three, five, which is your answer. So once you performed all these steps, you got to print this array and you're done. So it's a simple problem where you simply need to use brute force. You can either use a set or you can use a priority queue. Both of them will work. So let's take the example n equal to five and try to solve. So, you know, priority queue stores the maximum. So I will teach you a trick where priority queue can be used as you wish, but then without using a comparator. So assume this is the priority queue and the array is initially filled with zeros. So what is the longest sub array? I can say the longest sub array size will be five and its initial position will be zero and its last position will be nothing but four. So you will insert minus zero that is zero and four. So you'll insert this thing in the priority queue. You will understand why does this work in your first step, you get the topmost element in the priority queue. So what is the topmost element in the priority queue? That is five minus zero four. So L is zero R is four. So you find the middle term. So you get it and you replace it by one. So once you're done with this, you pop this element out. So once you have placed something at the second index, so the new sub arrays formed will be L and mid minus one and mid plus one R. Those are the new sub arrays and what will be its size? The size is very simple to find that will be two and over here the size will be two. So you insert this two thing in the priority queue. So you insert two comma, but L is over here zero. And mid minus one will be one and mid plus one is nothing but three comma four. So what you insert is minus zero comma one and minus three comma four. I'll let you know why. So I've inserted zero comma one because minus zero is zero eventually and two comma minus three comma four. So the topmost element in the priority key will be this. So you can understand why did I insert minus L? Because the problem stated if there are same size, we got to take the first one. So if I'm inserting minus, so whichever L is at first and whichever L is at the back, multiplying minus one to both will eventually make this element smaller than this. But that is the reason I did multiply with minus one. So you don't need to write any external comparator. So this is a small trick where you can convert priority queue into minimum priority queue too, without writing those syntax. So the topmost element now is two comma zero comma one. So now you can understand that why did we take minus into consideration? 
because taking minus into consideration eventually had 0 comma 1 at the top despite of both of them having same sizes because when you multiply a minus so 0 now becomes greater than minus 3 previously 3 was greater than 0 but subtracting a minus changes inequality so this is how you can convert the priority queue into a minimum priority queue as your wish without using any external comparators so what is the topmost element that is 2 comma 0 comma 1 so l and r is this so the middle of this is 0 so you will insert 2 over there because this is your second turn so once you have done with this you do not have any sub array on the left but you do have a sub array on the right that is 1 comma 1 so what is the thing that you will insert you have this sub array which is of size 1 and you have 1 comma 1 so you will insert minus 1 comma 1 so let's insert this so now the topmost element is 2 comma minus 3 comma 4 why because 2 is the largest one and priority queue stores the largest element at the top just in case the largest element are equal so it now compares on the second one so that is the reason we are storing it as minus one so that when it compares on the second the minimum one will be stored at the front so let's take that out 2 minus 3 4 so this minus 3 can be converted into 3 so we will get 3 comma 4 so what is the middle of 3 comma 4 that is 3 and this is the third turn so we replace it by 3 so once we are done with this what is the new sub array you can see there is no new sub array on the left but there is a sub array on the right so what is that 4 comma 4 so that will be minus 4 comma 4 while inserting and the size is 1 so you will insert this thing in the priority queue now so now the priority queue top stores 1 comma minus 1 now you can see these two are equal and and priority queue stores the maximum element at the top so one and one were equal so it had to compare on the second term so that was minus 1 and minus 4 and minus 1 and minus 4 minus 1 is greater so eventually the smaller l is at the disposal so you get this one so you have this now minus 1 minus 1 and 1 so this can be converted into plus that is 1 so l is this r is this and this is your fourth turn so what you do is you replace 0 with 4 so once you have done this you do not have any sub arrays on the left or any sub arrays on the right so you do not insert any further elements on the into the priority queue so the priority queue now has 1 minus 4 and 4 so let's take it out minus 4 and 4 so this can be 4 comma 4 so this is your fifth turn so let's replace it by fifth because the middle of 4 and 4 is 5 so i have replaced it by so once we have done this we will see that there is no further elements in the priority queue and our resultant array is 2 4 1 3 5 and which was our answer so this is how priority queue can help and you can also use set if you're using set what you can insert is because set stores the minimal element so you want it to be stored as the longest one so instead of inserting the size you can insert minus one into size so this eventually will store the largest element because you're changing the inequalities and you can keep the other thing as l comma r and set also works fine so if you do not know priority queue i'll highly recommend you to get back to my stl video watch that learn priority queue and come back over and start so the elements can be stored in this way pair of int comma pair of int comma int and you can store the size over here l over here r over here and l is always stored as minus l so this can be referred as first this as second dot first this is second dot second so that is the way to refer when you store it in pairs so let's quickly check out the code so what i did initially was i took n after that i declared a vector vi as vector of int and i initialized every one of them with zero and the size was n and i declared a priority queue of the similar format that i described i know initially the longest sub array is of size n and l is zero and r is n minus one so i inserted it once I've done that, I looped on till the priority queue was empty because we saw we did operations till the priority queue was empty. So L is, you know, whatever is PQ dot top dot second dot first. So for L minus one into PQ dot top dot SC dot first, SC means second, FI means first because I've already defined them to avoid writing. Then I take R that is second dot second. Then I take the length. Once I've done this, I can pop that sub array out because that is of no more use. Then what I do is I count the operation. Initially, the operation was zero. 
So I'm at the first operation. I have also kept a check for L greater than R. It might happen that I've inserted any sub arrays which, are, which is not valid. So I'll just pop it out. Then I find the mid. After that, I initialize mid width count. I know the left sub array will have a size of mid minus L plus one. And it will have minus one into L and mid minus one as the range. And the right one will have the size R minus mid plus one. Simple maths, you can do that. And L will have minus one into mid plus one. And R will be this. So I'm not putting any checks over here while inserting because it might happen there is no sub array on the left. So that is why I've written a single check because if I'd have written, so I'd have written multiple checks over here. Rather, if I can write a single check, so why do I need to write multiple checks? So once you have done this, you can print the array and that will be your answer. So this is all about this problem. I hope you have understood the approach. Just in case if you have, do press that like button. And if you're new to my channel, there's a red button over there. Subscribe. Press it as hard as you can. Don't forget to press the bell icon.